Being a fan of Taylor Swift has been the worst financial decision of my life. Get ready with me while I tell you about my biggest financial regret that I've made in my 20s. My university degree. Thanks for watching! Here's why starting an OnlyFans was the worst decision I made in my life. I did not realize that I was literally selling parts of my soul and the money could have never made it worth it. I just wish that someone would have warned me and told me that I was going to be later experiencing PTSD from the sexual trauma and the experiences that I was subjecting myself to on a daily basis. I did not know that I would later need to be in trauma counseling. It brought me into way darker places than I ever could have imagined and I never want to go back there. I wish I could go back in time to who I was before I started doing all that stuff and just tell myself that the money is not worth it. Keep your happiness. And that's all I want to tell any girl who's thinking about starting an account. I just hope I can save even just one girl from going through the pain and the trauma that I am now going through because I subjected myself to that for the last couple of years. Women might seem complicated at first, at least for us men. But once you understand how they think and how they act, they become very predictable. Hi, my name is Allison. I'm 28 years old and I'm going to pay off $28,000 of debt this year. I have a deal with myself that if I can do this by next January, I can go down to working four days a week during my life and then move to three days a week when I start a family. If there is one financial regret I have in my almost 30 years of living, it would be spending $30,000 on a wedding. I'm in $71,000 worth of debt right now, so um, let's see how we got there. So let's start with credit cards. I have four credit cards, but only three of them are in you. To begin, just in case you ever think I'm a good influence financially, um, you should know that I set myself a budget of $160 a month to spend on like fun purchases, whether it's like going out to eat or buying clothes or, you know, stuff like that. Um, and today is uh, July 5th and I've spent $450 of that. All their feelings drive all the actions. And whenever those feelings change, they change their mind as well. And that's why they have closets full of clothes and shoes that they never wear. Taking out student loans was the worst, was the single-handedly worst mistake I've ever made in my entire life. At this point, like, a college education is pointless. It was pointless. It, there's no hope. I didn't hang on my student loans for more than 13 years now. And I've more than paid back the amount that I took out. And then some because of interest. <laughs> and there's all this like misinformation and false hope around forgiveness and qualifying payments and just. <laughs> and I checked the boxes for 90% of the qualifying factors. <laughs> but I'm going to have to pay on my loans for another five years <laughs> minimum. And that's if there's even any type of program around that time for forgiveness before I can even qualify, even though I meet the qualifications now. But because I don't check that one last box, there, there's nothing that can be done. Nothing has made me feel more ho hopeless and just helpless and just at full defeat. <laughs> these student loans so i am known to make bad financial decisions meet my bad financial decision this is slate he was a breeder surrender because he ate a belly full of rocks and i took over his care and yeah this is my newest bad financial decision That dog is so cute. I have two dogs and I love them more than some family members. But boy, let me tell you something. They are a big financial liability. Because those vet bills never come at the right time, people.
of financial decisions I've made in the pursuit of love. So for Christmas one year, I was dating somebody who decided to get me tickets to his favorite comedian out in New York City, which is somewhere that he knew very well it wasn't a place that I enjoyed visiting. But in my mind, I'm like, oh my God, I've never had somebody plan a trip for me. But let me tell you, he planned literally nothing except for getting those tickets because the Airbnb was not booked. We were gonna stay with his mom, he decided. Uh, and he did not book any flights or anything else. Time comes to book the flights. He sends me some flights and he's like, you know, we should probably book these soon. And what do I do? Because I'm constantly trying to earn love. I go, hey, you know, why don't we just use my, my point? He's like, no, 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 I feel weird, you know, having you pay for our flights for a Christmas gift that I got you. In the back of my mind, I'm going like, yeah, Chloe, that's fucking weird. Let him pay. What are you doing? But no, instead I say the thing that I say so many times in this relationship, because I know it works on him, is I say, well, if the roles were reversed and you had 100,000 points, wouldn't you just pay for it too? And he's like, you got me there. You got me there. He knew I was going to offer that. He knew I was going to say these things. So I'm like, I got you, baby. And I book the flight. 80,000 points right out of the window. And three days later, we break up. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it was the type of breakup where I could tell he had been planning it. And so I just look at him and I'm like, why did you let me buy those flights to the Christmas gift that you got me? And he just stared at me blankly. And of course, I can only use the credit if he is traveling with me. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. So don't try to earn love, girlies. Oh, by the way, she described herself as a money coach. Make it make sense. What does she mean by don't try to earn love, girly? Does she mean getting used by someone of the opposite gender? and not getting anything in return, like men have been used for centuries and centuries. I have to be honest, people. It really, really warms my heart to see this. A woman spent a big amount of money on a man, but didn't get anything in return. That is so refreshing. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome to Equality, ladies. I'm in $71,000 worth of debt right now. So um, let's see how we got there. So let's start with credit cards. I have four credit cards, but only three of them are in use. To begin, which is actually a Discover loan, like personal loan that I took out to pay off my actual credit cards because the interest rate for the personal loan was cheaper than the interest rates on each card. Um, so it's saving me money in the long run, um, paying it off. But for about a year, I wasn't working and was kind of depressed, so it got racked up a little bit. Next is the big kahuna. It's the student loans regret going to college but i regret how expensive it was and living on campus okay women keep the economy alive let me rephrase that women drive the economy and society's overall spending but they spend a lot of money on useless stuff that's also why the majority of the credit card debt and even student loan debt is owned by women if it wasn't for how much money they spend the economy would be in big trouble just go to any mall or any department store is mostly filled with women. Even the men that you see at the mall, majority of the time, they even go there because of their wife, their girlfriend, or their fiance. And that's why corporations, the media, and politicians bend over backwards to pander and to cater to them. They are also very influenceable. That's why advertisers, big business, and the government bend over backwards to cater to them as well. Big business want their money, and politicians want their votes. If there is one financial regret I have in my almost 30 years of living, it would be spending $30,000 on a wedding. The wedding industry has all of us girlies in a chokehold, making us feel like we need to prove something to everyone around us and have this massive, expensive, beautiful wedding. I fell under that and became brainwashed and went from eloping and having something casual and under 5K to having this 30K wedding in San Francisco with only 50 people. At the end of the day, I look back at this and I think about how much of that money I could have used for something so much more valuable. If your wedding planning isn't about you and your spouse and it's about everybody else, don't do it. Just elope and save their money. Guys, don't be mad at women if they don't know what they want because most of the time, they don't know what they want. Don't get fooled by the beautiful eyes, the big booty, or the shiny curly hair. They are really confused and indecisive. How do you know that? They want something today, but the very next day, or even a few hours later, they hate that same thing that they just wanted so bad. Or they might hate something today, but they love it tomorrow. Make it make sense, people. Women are shapeshifters. What do I mean by that? Whatever they want changed a lot, and it's never the same. Their feelings set the tone for all of the decisions. Have you ever noticed that when they talk, they say, I feel like a lot because their feelings drive all their actions. And whenever those feelings change, 
they change their mind as well. And that's why they have closets full of clothes and shoes that they never wear. Buying a house has probably been the worst decision of my life. So I'm 26 years old, work full time, have my career, been to grad school. And so naturally buying a house was kind of the next step in life, right? Like that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to buy a home, invest in real estate, build equity, because it's gonna set you up. That's a smart financial move, right? And of course, social media makes it seem all like rainbows and butterflies. You can invest in a fixer upper, renovate your home, uh, build equity and flip it for a profit. And it's all great. And it's the best financial decision you can make, right? In my case, it's just become a nightmare. Uh, the house is a total money pit. I have spent tens of thousands of dollars more than I could have ever anticipated. I'm living in the middle of renovations. My half my house doesn't really even have a floor or a working subfloor. The other half doesn't really have walls. And that's how I'm living right now um, because I've blown through my budget on things that were necessary but weren't caught during an inspection. And so I'm stuck. So I figured I'm stuck here. I gotta make the most of it. and. Why not share this experience so hopefully someone else can learn from my mistakes. So follow along if you want to see the worst parts of homeownership. And this is what I found very funny, okay? Your girl will complain to you like this. Baby, I have nothing to wear. But meanwhile, she has a closet full of clothes and shoes. When your girl tells you that she has nothing to wear, this is what she really means. Baby, based on how I feel right now, I hate the clothes and the shoes that I have in my closet. Women don't normally have independent ideas. Let me explain. If your girl all of a sudden changes the way she acts toward you, or the way she dresses, how often she goes out, or simply if her behavior changes all of a sudden, it is because of somebody. Someone put it in her brain. Maybe it's her best friend, or her mom, or her sister, or some random stranger on the internet. Or maybe she's getting attention from a guy she likes. Guys, they never have original ideas. It always comes from someone. So if you want to know a woman better, get to know who she spends her time with outside of you. And most importantly, watch closely how they interact. You will learn a lot, my friend. And like I said to our biggest supporter, all hell M, women might seem complicated at first. At least for us men. But once you understand how they think and how they act, they become very predictable. So a big, huge shout out to all hell M. Thank you for your support and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.